So this is trying to look at the almost the project side of design and software. So we've, so far we've very much looked at the, the what the individual does in terms of writing code and building it and debugging it. Um, and what we're going to look at now is especially the agile stuff is what the, the, the techniques teams will use to then try and develop software. How they should be working as a, as a group. Now, as originally, this was, you hear the phrase waterfall used quite often. It's very widely used and actually misused. So, there's a paper written, again, the day, 1970. Uh, so, Royce wrote the paper, Managing Development of Large Scale Software. And he put this, this picture directly from the paper, uh, saying that you know, the, the conceptual model of development is system requirements, software requirements, analysis, design, coding, testing, operations. And he said that's sort of the conceptual model. Um, and a lot of people say, well, that, that was the problem of how we used to develop software. We, we, they always quote, we use a waterfall model. And the problem with the waterfall model is there's no feedback associated with this. So you can't start coding until you've done design. You can't do design until you do analysis. And that's, that's the message associated with it. Um, but Royce, and this is what frustrates me, he said in his paper, I believe in this concept that the implementation described here is risky and invites failure. So even in 1970, that's not the way we do it. And yet we still find people saying today, focusing that, that's the reason we do Agile. It's like, well, he never said we'd do it that way. Yeah. Um, and again, in this paper, this is 1970, so over 45 years ago, after documentation, the second most important criteria for success revolves around whether the product is totally original. If the computer programming question has been developed the first time, a range of matters say that the version finally delivered to the customer for operational employment is actually the second version. So again, 1970, he's saying, throw one away. So back in the 70s, we clearly say, do not deliver the first iteration of software, because it, you're learning from that particular one. So the second most quoted model is the V model. And this is still used heavily um, in system, system descriptions. So same sort of idea, but user requirements, system requirements, so user requirements, system requirements, architectural engineering, design, coding, uh, and old hardware fabrication. Then this concept called unit testing, subsystem integration, system integration, system test, and acceptance test. Now this diagram is used heavily uh, by people in the test, coming from a test background, it's the most common thing. But also used quite a lot by some of the co by some of the development standards. So in automotive, there is a standard called ISO 26262, which is about developing automotive systems. And one part of that is to do with automotive software. And they have this sort of picture in that. Um, and again, nobody really does it quite this way. So it's a stick, stick, it's a, I don't think anybody's ever done it quite this way. But the principles are there, it's what we should be doing as, as a matter. And especially these early ones, uh, these tend to get blurred in a lot of companies. It's this separation of what are the user requirements, what are the system requirements. And I'd say that's missed more than anything. That's what lots of companies, especially where you're software only, of course, if you, you, you're only dealing with software, you don't generally have to think too much about systems. You, know, you, you can sort of step over that. And again, if we only think about coding, we don't have to think about the hardware manufacturing aspects. So, so because of that model, actually, again, this dates from 86. Um, so again, early 80s, Barry Bean developed the spiral model. And this was the his approach saying, well, we, we've sort of got to look differently the way you're developing software, this, this very sort of V model. Um, and this was based around a, what was called an evolutionary prototyping model. So again, 83, clearly stating we've got to build prototypes. And the idea of the spiral model is we have these quadrants, determine objectives, identify resolve risks, development of test, and then plan the next iteration. And the aim was is you take a smaller part, you take through some risk analysis, and you go through that, you build some concepts, you do some, re uh, some requirements, uh, and you do validation. But the principle of this model is it's a feedback loop. So you, you learn as you go. So again, part of this model is you try things and you feed back into your system what you've learned from the previous iteration. Uh, but this was originally based on a prototyping model until we get to operational profile. And only at that point do we go through detailed design, code integration, and test on normal implementation model. So it was very much as I talked about there being a couple of prototypes prior to actually developing the system. So we've had all this for years of people saying we've got a prototype and we don't. We still don't. This sort of formed the root of Agile, but Agile sort of adapted the model. Uh, and I'll, again I'll come back to that a little bit later. 
So the foundation of Agile, um, a bunch of guys got together in, uh, in a ski resort in America, and I can't remember how many of them were, and they decided they were going to come up with this, this new way of working. The current way of working is not, not working for software, you know, we get late projects, we're missing deadlines, projects are getting cancelled. So they came up with this concept called a manifesto, so it's dated 2001. Um, and they were trying to push certain ideas. So the first one is individuals and iterations over process and tool. So their argument was that the way we've been developing software up to this point, so through the 90s, 80s and 90s, is there's been a lot of emphasis on processes as in very um, almost prescriptive methods of developing software. You must follow these methods. Um, and associated tools, a lot of effort put into case tools, into design tools, expecting it to improve things, and it didn't seem to be making those improvements. Um, Working software of documentation, saying that a lot of documentation being generated is of no value. Which I can quite agree with, there's a lot of documentation of no value. So the measure of the system is working software. That's your, that's your only real measure, not how much diagrams you've got, not how much documentation is, how much of it is actually working today. Uh, customer collaboration over contract negotiation. Uh, again, personally, that's very idealistic because it depends on your environment. Um, re responding to change over following a plan. And this is probably one of the most important ones is trying to build in this idea of saying that we have to be, this is where the term agile comes from, we have to be more adaptable to change. So we're having these problems that we were creating these plans, we had, we had a plan, we had a process, and once we got on that path, that was it. And if new requirements came in, it, but the people were very inflexible, or contract renegotiation to get those things. We're saying, no, we've really got to welcome, we've got to accept change and welcome change. So we've got to develop software in a different way if we're going to be able to do this. So based on the, that manifesto, they then create, created, sorry, based on the, um, yeah, so based on this manifesto, they then created these principles sitting behind it. Um, so, and these have had a big effect over the last decade on the way we, we look to develop software today. It actually has quite a, quite a major change. Um, so one of the first ones, and I, th I do think this is quite an important one, and actually going to have the biggest impact on embedding going forward, is our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. So this term called continuous delivery, and again I'll revisit this, um, but the aim is rather than having what we generally refer to as the Big Bang approach. The Big Bang approach is you, you write software, you write software, you have a delivery date, and you just keep writing on that delivery date, you go, here you are, okay, that's it. And then if it's not right, we now renegotiate what's wrong associated with it. But this one was again using an approach called an incremental delivery approach, where you do much shorter development cycles and you show bits of functionality as early as you can to get early feedback from the system. So I think that is the most important in terms of a, cust a customer claiming they're agile is how close they are to meeting that. Now there are challenges I'll talk about later of continuous delivery in bit. But as a principle, it should absolutely be the guiding principle. And for most companies who claim they're agile, they're not because they're not targeting that as the, the ultimate principle of, of uh, agile. Um, so welcoming changing requirements, delivering software frequently. Um, business people and developers work together daily through, throughout the project. Okay, that's a, again, um, that's not happening at most companies. There's still, there's still be barriers between management uh, it does work on some, but again, there are. This, this is where the communication is breaking down. So again, when people are claiming to be agile and that's not happening, then they're not agile by definition. Um, here's a root problem: build projects around motivated individuals. There's a lot of unmotivated individuals out there. You do get motivated, but it is give them the environment support they need and trust them to get on with the job. So it's anti-management in many ways. And of course, as you can guess, this doesn't fit well with many be the companies where they're very rigorous management structures. The most efficient and effective method of conveying information and developing software is face-to-face -face conversations. Yep. Uh, working software is a primary measure of progress. So it's an important thing. It's, you know, what, not how are you 80% done in 90% of what is done. So it comes back to this, def this, this term you use, definition of done. So when are you done? When is part of that done? That is our measure associated with it. Um, Concept of sustainable development, 
So the idea is not trying to burn people out. It's not having these mad rushes on working 24 hours a day on shift work just to try and get it out the door. It's trying to say, no, it should be even down over the time uh, with that. Uh, technical excellence, simplicity, self-organising team is another very important one. Uh, and the idea in here is that when there's, a work, there's some work package to do, the team agrees who's best suited to doing that piece of work. So in theory, it makes a lot of sense. It's the practical of it. Um, a regular enforcer team reflects on how to become more effective and then tunes and adjusts the behaviour. So a lot of this has come from the Barry Bean model. And so the spiral model was the root of many of these ideas, this, this feedback. So, so we talk about the idea, if we go back, of the idea of incremental and iterative approach. So incremental are the key deliverables, and iterative means I go through my process and I refine and improve my process. And all modern techniques are based around that principle. So, good, good ideas. Um, the other thing that, that I, I see quite regularly when looking at Agile, uh, and the work I've been doing in Agile, is that, again, Agile people miss some of the key things. So the Agile Alliance clearly said, we embrace modeling. So a lot of Agile people said, well, it's an excuse not to do any design, we just code. You know, we, we can just get into coding because working with software is the measure. So the quicker we're coding, the further we've got. Where the agile is saying, no, actually, there's it, modeling is important, architectural design is important, but we do it for a reason, and I think that's an important distinction. We aren't modeling just for the sake of modeling, there's a real directive behind what we're going to do and how much we're going to do within this. We embrace documentation, okay? So it is part, it's not the code is the documentation, there is still documentation, and we plan. Okay? So a lot of people who claim they're agile don't do any of those. Again, they're missing, they, they miss some of the key building blocks. Um, so these guys all came from different backgrounds, a whole load of different names that came through, very much through the 90s. Most of these were developed in the 90s. Um, the, the one that sort of brought it to life was actually one called Extreme Programming. So that's very grand, isn't it? It's like programming and cliff facts or something. Um, and it was, it was written by a guy called Ken Beck. And I remember getting the book very early, and it, I, I, it was really taken by. One of these books that was really eye-opening, really challenged everything I'd ever done before. Um, and unlike many of the principles, I thought I can see what he's trying to do here. To associate with it. Uh, Scrum will come on to uh, DSFDM, Dynamic System Development Method, was one that came through the, uh, through, through the 90s. And there's a number of different ones that, that came through. Um, this is still my favourite picture, which seems to have disappeared now. I did check that recently. It seems to have disappeared to shame. And, and it's slightly misleading. People get they, they try and infer too much from this. So, so don't don't worry too much about the picture. It's not trying to <coughs> people overanalyze this picture. The basic idea of the picture is each dot, so each station represents a particular technique that the agile community may use, and then the lines represent different agile sort of camps as such. So here we can see Scrum. Okay, so Scrum has a number of things in it. So definition of Reddit is one of those in there. Um, these things that I call planning poker, and I won't get into that, but there, there's a technique you use to try and predict how long a piece of software is going to take to write. You, you, there's a technique called planning poker. Um, the main one's down here. Notice version control is key. Incremental literacy development. Um, some of the other ones, so there's a lot of stuff to do with testing. So unit testing, something called test-driven development, mock objects. Down here. Another group here, continuous deployment, continuous integration, automated build version control, which is to do with what's called DevOps. That's sort of the new kid on the block. So th these all represent different techniques you can use if you're agile. And again, I always challenge teams saying, okay, you're agile, how many of these are you actually doing? Because the answer is quite often they're doing very few of them. They're not, and not, no, you wouldn't necessarily do all of them, but there are some key things saying, well, if I'm Scrum, then show me your bird damage. Show me your burn down chart, show me your task board, what, give me your definitions of done. And the answer is they can't because they don't do that. Yeah, so they're, they're sort of ticking a box, but they're not actually following it through. Uh, the other thing people get wrong with Agile is there are two parts to Agile. There's the Agile processes and there's the Agile techniques. So most of those, are, so the stations are mainly techniques and the lines are to do with all the process aspects. Um, and unfortunately, again, people focus on the process and not on the technique. 